There it goes. Hey everybody. Uh, Matt Shopman here, another another month of UX and AZ. Um, we have Deborah Pruitt, right? And yep. Cassidy Bro. Yes. Hello. Yes. <laughs> awesome. I'm horrible at two you. for two. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're gonna be uh, talking to us about all the awesome programs they have over at ASU. Um, mainly around uh, the UX masters, right? Uh, program and are you going to go I'm into also. all the different ones or? Oh, uh, we're we're going to hit GIT. GIT as well. Okay, yep. good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Everything. And uh, GIT is uh, graphics information technology. Graphic that... information yes. technology. Yes. Awesome. Um, just before everybody takes off, I I'll do some um kind of housekeeping housekeeping in uh, the beginning here. Oftentimes I do it at, at the end and like five people are on. <laughs> so <I'll>, uh, <laughs> like, hey, oh shoot, I should have done that earlier. Um, yeah, we have a, a meetup next month at uh, Research Collective. Uh, we're gonna do a tour and uh, like a, kind of a house, uh, like open house and check out their facility with Russ Brannigan and uh, Annika is uh, over there now so we're um we're, it's gonna be really fun and then afterwards i think we're gonna hit up uh the mill social um bar i've never been there but i guess it's kind of close to their their uh office so um should be kind of a kind of a fun night of seeing something really cool asking questions about their facility and their and their processes within this facility and then we'll go hang out um you know after somewhere in, in talk. Um, so, and then on, um, that would be for October. And for November, we got a slot filled already with Alice Bao. Uh, she is um, at ASU as well, or maybe she's not anymore. Do you, is James, is she, is she at ASU still? She, I know she's really into AI and I haven't really announced it with the all the titles and the, and the in the in details but it'll be around ai um she's been really into that for the last couple of years she used to work at nudesic briefly um but wanted to go back to school and there's some other issues but uh uh not that not from our <laughs> standpoint um from hers but um she she uh hopefully we see you know she comes back but um it's that's going to be really cool and then make sure you um kind of leave open the second week of December, because that will be our UX Miss Christmas party. Um, I'm working currently working on that to get funding for it and finding locations for that. Um, so that's always a fun time. And this year we'll, I think we did it live last year, um, but definitely this year will be in person and wear your ugly sweater. Um, <laughs> So uh, I guess uh, I'll let uh, Deborah and Cassidy uh, start. So, yeah. And it says host disabled participant. Oh, sorry. Sharing. Yeah. There's always something I forget. That's okay. <laughs> I have to Again, call that, that one, they just can't give it to me, right? Like they can't make yeah. that happen automatically. <laughs> okay. Let me organize here. Can you see my slideshow? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. All right. So uh, we could do quick intros too, uh, Deb, if, if you're okay with that. So yeah. my name is Cassidy Bro. I'm a lecturer within the Graphic Information Technology Program at ASU. Um, I've been a lecturer for about a, a year now and uh, a faculty associate for three years prior to that. Uh, I most recently worked as a senior user experience designer at GoDaddy, working on their website builder flows and checkout cart flows uh, before I switched over into education. Deb, do you wanna go? Yep, absolutely. And we're so happy to have Cassidy with us. Um, um, I'm Deb Gruitt. I am a, let's see, I am a senior lecturer um, in graphic information technology. I am also, as of two months ago, the program chair for the um, UX master's degree. 
Awesome. Awesome. All right. So uh, I guess we'll get started. Uh, as an aspiring UXer, it can be difficult to understand the avenue in which to take your career. There's LinkedIn learning courses, Coursera, Google certificates, and many, many boot camps. Uh, then there's the degree route. So tonight we're going to be focusing on just that. Is a degree right for you? At Arizona State University, we offer a degree that allows you to learn about UX. And Deb and I are going to talk about that degree, uh, what it is, what we offer, and what our students can produce. So I'll be talking about the undergraduate side, and Deb will be talking about the master's side. So, oops, where? There we go. Make sure my mouse isn't in the way. Uh, so graphic information technology is what our program is called. And we also abbreviate that as GIT. So you'll hear us using that term interchangeably. So graphic information technology and GIT. So to introduce GIT, it's important to understand the skills that you're gonna learn through the program. So who we are. Um, we like to describe our program as the intersection between design and technology. GIT was born in 1958, so as you can imagine, it's evolved. <laughs> technology is very different today than it was back then. So our program educates our students to become industry leaders, uh, to become comfortable with complex and ever-changing technology, to be storytellers, problem solvers, and visual communicators, as it shows here on the slide. Um, and GIT primarily lives in the front end user universe of content interaction. So this is our mission statement. Our students become innovative problem solvers prepared for leading roles and entrepreneurship opportunities in the rapidly evolving design industry. Um, so our students learn through primarily project based learning, we, we really put an emphasis and a focus on project-based learning. Also on teamwork, we like to mimic sort of how the industry would work in that regard. And also just authentic client experiences. Um, there's some courses that we'll talk about in the upper division that where our students get to actually work with real clients and get that experience in managing that client uh, relationship and delivering work. All right, so what we do, okay, so what the heck do we do? What do we teach? <laughs> so this list is a great just overview of what it is that we do. Uh, graphic design, cross-media design, user experience, multimedia, interaction, motion graphics, visual effects, commercial photography, video production, front-end development, full stack print. Um, so we'll get, more into the nuances of the degree and how that works. Um, we're broken up into primary and secondary focus areas, but you can also choose a concentration, like how you want your, um, your degree to be tailored. Uh, and that goes all the way up into the master's program. Um, but these are all the things that we touch on and that our students can focus on within their um, degree, whether that's the undergraduate side or the graduate side. But now let's look at the fun stuff, the fun part, the stuff we've made, uh, what our students can produce. Matt, do you have a question? I did. Um, yeah. Where would a person go for 3D animation? Is that part of this program or is that a different part? Or is that in one of these? In these, in these? Well, we do, we do have some courses in 2D and 3D animation. That is one of our focus areas within this degree. So okay. um, you can learn that here, yeah. Cool. Um, so the stuff we've made. So we, uh, our students produce everything from visual design to animation and of course user experience. So I just want to quickly run through um, just some examples of those things. So this was actually in our 100 level course, our GIT 135, um, just composites and creating visual uh, storytelling. This is entirely out of my wheelhouse, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> I can't speak to this, but it's cool. And our students produce these things. <laughs> it looks like yeah, they're if, rigging. They're yeah. rigging in Maya. Yeah, that's. There you go. 
rigging is the term. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool though. Um, branding is something uh, that we put an emphasis on, a focus on. We have projects for, and also um, opportunities with that client-based projects to uh, produce. So here's an example of this sort of, you know, elegant brand for this whiskey company. Um, and they went, this student, her name's Amy Hector. She's fantastic. Um, she went as far as creating menu designs, business cards, um, wrap like packaging wraps and then she did uh, photographs as well so these are actual photographs of those things that she took which is cool um also some interesting print design there's opportunity within some of our courses to reach across different programs, uh, different concentrations so our students can pair with engineering with um, human systems engineering students with um, with others to be able to create work that's impactful um, or that they'll see around campus or the community. So this is one of those um, examples here. This is a video bumper that our students created. Um, so also a focus on um, photography and video. and digital design, print and publishing as well, opportunity for that. Um, and photography, I think I think this was GIT 384, which means that they photograph this themselves and then create the print design for it. And of course, we're at a UX meetup, so we'll focus on this one, which is user experience design and development. So focusing on data analysis, user-centered research, um, you know, wireframes, personas, case studies, um, and then being able to present that work in an effective manner. This is a fantastic example talking in, about feedback-based improvements, showing how their user research um, like basically went into future iterations of this design and just problem solving in general. So this was a fantastic example that one of our students uh, produced. I think this was last spring. Okay, into our degrees. So let's work our way down this list, starting with the Bachelor's of Science in Graphic Information Technology. So the Bachelor's of Science degrees require 120 credit hours. Then within that degree, you can choose a primary and a secondary focus. So your primary focus can be one of the following. Front end web design and development, commercial photography and video, digital design, print and publishing, and then 2D, 3D animation. So those are the four that you can choose from. The secondary focus can be any topic, and most of our students choose one that will aid or complement their primary focus. Uh, and you'll take four courses within that secondary focus area, two of them being upper division, so 300, 400 level. Next, you can choose a concentration within GIT. So since we're at a UX meetup, let's spend a little time in this UX concentration topic. So in choosing this concentration, you'll get experience in user-centered design, user research, data analysis, presentation, uh, and of course, visual design. You'll practice with visual design technologies and become comfortable with language, UX terminology, all of those things. Um, and what's cool about this concentration is that we partner with other degree programs. So uh, we are GIT, but we also will reach across to HSC, which is Human Systems Engineering, and TWC, which um, I think stands for, correct me if I'm wrong, Deb, Technical Writing Communication. Is that right? Yeah, te technical writing and communication. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so Matt, Matt had a couple of questions. Oh, he did. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, oh, it looks like it's just to me. Yeah, I was um, just asking you mostly, but um, I could ask it now. Yeah. As far yeah. as like upper level type of focuses, do you guys get into the uh, like design systems, mainly around the atoms and the molecules part? Not really, not necessarily the code part, although that would be cool too, but you know, how much do you get into the um, a design system? 
I will say um, in the undergraduate level, not much. It's something that I talk about in my class, um, but it's it's something actually I was thinking about as a workshop for this semester uh, yeah. that I had, I had planned just because I went to that UX Den event and they did a fantastic job mm -hmm. talk, talking about atomic design. And I was like, wow, we should be teaching more of this. Um, yeah. We touch on that, but, but yeah. Um, okay. I can help you out with that if you ever want to. Um, yeah. And it's um it's definitely something that the industry is really ramping up into, um, so it'd be really good for them to know at least the basics of it. Yeah, if absolutely. Not, you know, it's fairly easy to get up speed with it, so I think it would be interesting. I don't think a, a really okay. a master student needs to be the one that learns it. You know, definitely an undergraduate type. Topic. Definitely. Well, just to be able to to think at that component based level too is just going to set them so much further yeah. apart when they enter the industry and, and hear again that those that terminology and mm -hmm. learn that or work in that type of way, right? Yeah, absolutely. I got a good exercise if you want to use it. So but we'll talk later. Thank but. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, our, our courses and our topics are always ever evolving as we start thinking about these or learning about these new technologies and new ways of working. Um, but we have. And we reach out to industry. We have an industry advisory board um, that we meet with at least once a year um, to you know, tell us what you need. Yep. Tell us what's coming up. What are you working on? And then we can tailor classes or workshops or um, um, brown bag sessions around that. Yeah. And our students love learning that. We have such a good group. Um, they love coming to workshops and just learning about the next best thing in UX or what's upcoming. We have a, a hungry group of UX students, which is great. Um, uh, one more thing I wanted to mention related to sort of the UX concentration is that with reaching out to those other degree programs, so not just taking GIT classes, but taking HSC and TWC classes, um, it allows our students to dive into user psychology, also general um, technical writing and communication skills. Um, so they're getting all of that along with that visual design skill. Uh, okay, so next up, the concentration in full stack I'll quickly touch on. Uh, so th this concentration will teach skills in both front end and back end development. There's a bit of a focus on user centered design, just because that should be a focus in everything, but also on client side scripting. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then server side programming, which would be PHP, Python, and SQL. Um, at the very least. Then the bachelor's, the next one is the BAS in GIT. So the Bachelor of Applied Science degree allows you to transfer your credits taken um, or that you've earned with an associate's degree. And then you'll just take an additional 60 credit hours with GIT to receive that bachelor's in whatever focus or concentration you want that to be in. Uh, and then Deb, are you going to be focusing on or touching on the four plus one at all? I can quickly talk on that. If not, not really, you can go ahead and. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so four plus one is a degree in which, so you receive a bachelor's degree in four years. And then in the final year of your bachelor's degree, your credits almost do a double duty. So they count towards your undergrad and also your master's. What that allows is for you to get a bachelor's and a master's degree in five years. So that four of the undergrad plus that one of the master's. So four plus one. Uh, I actually graduated with that four plus one. So I am advocating for it. <laughs> and one, one thing I wanna put in there is um, if you do do the BS and GIT with the concentration in UX, it is a direct four plus one path into the master's in UX. Hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. And then quickly, I'll touch on the MS and GIT. That one requires a minimum of 30 credit hours, and you can choose those credits to go towards either a thesis, an applied project, or a portfolio. And then Deb will talk about the MS in UX. And lastly, we do offer a concurrent degree. 
uh, with Cronkite, the School of Journalism, which is pretty cool. Okay. Any question? Well, we'll get to questions at the end, but any questions on degree related things? Okay. Actually, I do. Uh, do you, what do you, what kind of, um, um, so the lead into MS, you know, uh, actually the breakdown between how many people would go into the, the master student or master um, degree in GIT or master's degree in UX, is it, is there a heavy bias to one or the other, or do you find, you know, what are those percentages that people go into? We don't really have the percentages, but um, the MSUX, we just launched the online version of that last fall. So it's new mm -hmm. and the on ground is only two years old. Right. So yeah. It's not quite it's, had the history probably. No, but we did have a growth. In, um, we had a 3000% growth in applications. Wow. from fall 21 to fall 22. <laughs> yeah. So word is getting out. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, our, our master's students um, in GIT, most of the time they have taken the BS in um, GIT and that's a direct path into the four plus one to get into the GIT master's degree. Mm -hmm. um, the UX concentration has only been around since 2019. So again, relatively new. So if a student started in 2018, it, they would have to apply for the uh, master's in UX. Makes sense. But we have you know, created that pathway for them to go right into it mm -hmm. by doing the um, UX concentration. Mm -hmm. I can say from, people, from a person that hires a lot of people from ASU, um, both programs are amazing um and really both programs um i can see a difference between a person that's gone through it and a person that hasn't you know they're a little bit more accelerated a little bit more practice they they can get on the ground running a little bit faster than than somebody that hasn't taken a program like that so if you are looking for a program it definitely helps mm -hmm. in the industry yeah, it just proves, you know, with all those applications we're getting in for the masters, we have, again, those hungry students, we have a lot of interest, which is awesome. Oh, yes. All right, let's keep going. I have a couple more slides for the undergrad. Um, so we have these student organizations that we offer our students, one being AIGA, ASU, Polytechnic. So it is a uh, break off of AIGA Arizona um, and our student group is fantastic and they put on events and workshops for our uh, GIT community. We also have a poly photo club and a coding club. Now the other thing I wanted to touch on was the GIT creative agency. So I have a quick video to show for that. It's just um before it goes into it i think it, there's no sound to to relay it's just like music but um we'll watch this video and then i'll explain it a little bit further Okay, so our GIT Creative Agency is a group of students. We call them our superstar students. Uh, they are uh, they apply and are accepted into our course. This is a 400 and 500 level course. And these students get the opportunity to work on real projects with real clients. Uh, Matt just came and spoke to my class. What was that? A couple of weeks ago. Um, so there's industry speakers that 
come in and talk to the students about anything from design thinking to what it's like to work in the industry to hiring practices. So these group of students get that exclusive experience with working with industry uh, in that way. They get practice with project management and also mentorship opportunities. And here's that was some fun. of- I liked I liked yeah. talking to you people. Um, I definitely encourage all your industry people in this call to try to do that for, for them and then really anybody out there in the world. Uh, but it seemed, um, you know, trying to give back a little bit. And the students love it. Uh, you know, for them, it's a way to get their foot in the door. So especially if you're trying to hire for, for UX people, this is a great way. But also, um, oh, I wanted to mention actually what the students are working on this semester. So I have a group of seven students, so we keep it fairly small on purpose. And those seven students are working on, I think, four projects. So one is they're building an exhibit for this um, event in November. The event is called Food of the Future. And they're building an exhibit that would be a futuristic pop-up shop that would exist in this futuristic world. So what does food look like in the future? And they're also designing like a series of posters um, that would live in that world as well. Uh, there's opportunity for 30 Valley Metro vinyl decals with this project. Um, so big eyes, and they're going to have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Another project is GIT Stock. So they're working on creating a stock photo and video repository of our students, our events, things that we can use for recruiting GIT in general. And then relating to UX, there is another project, uh, the Queen Creek Veteran Center. So there is a veteran center being built over here in Queen Creek, and they're asking for a website. Um, so they're actually creating branding and uh, figuring out users and creating a website for this Queen Creek Veteran Center. Uh, we're in early stages of that right now, but they're really excited to get moving on it. Here's just a snapshot of the companies our uh, students work for or have worked for. So with experience in GAT, you have the opportunity to be able to work at any of these companies. Um, and again, because we have graduates in any of these companies, we also have the opportunity to reach out for industry connections, industry advisory boards, and also workshops. Um, so. Oh, no new Jessica on here. We need to do hey. that. How dare you? I got at least three of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Now you have to put IBM. Well, new oh, Jessica right. in IBM yeah. company. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you the logo. A snapshot. This is. I just said a snapshot. <laughs> it can be. It can be bigger. It can be like right up here, and then <laughs> <laughs> bigger than Adobe. Bigger than <laughs> yeah. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Quickly, I want to mention a couple of uh, like rankings that we've gotten recently, awards that we've gotten recently. So we were listed number three ba best bachelors in web development in 2021. Also number three in best online masters in graphic design in 2021. And the MS and GIT was one of the top UX schools in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Best online graphic design degrees by the best schools in 2018. So a lot of accreditation there. And we'll just quickly look at the courses as well. So these are just a snapshot of some of the entry-level courses. What we try to do with our students is with each of the focus areas, the four focus areas, we have our students taking a, a class in each of those areas just to get a, a, a sense of what, you know, what is in, involved in each of those different areas. So uh, 135 graphic communications, all of our students take that. GIT 210 creative thinking. So this is about creative uh, thinking creatively, coming up with ideas and what it means to visualize those ideas. GIT 215 is introduction to web authoring. So they get a, a um, experience with HTML and CSS and 
the world of coding, Git, GitHub, all those things. GIT 230, digital illustration and publishing, learning some tools. GIT 250, introduction to commercial print. 314, multimedia design planning and storyboarding. Oops, things are falling, sorry. Uh, 315, digital video techniques. And then I wanted to put at the bottom, JT 340, that's our information design and usability, our UX course for our undergrad. And we offer both on ground at ASU Polytechnic. This is over in the Mesa location and online. So ASU online, we have a huge online presence. And some of our courses, specifically our JT Creative Agency, is offers a hybrid. So we offer some courses on ground and online in a hybrid format. And then we also offer that online separately than on ground. So really works for any schedule. All right, that concludes my undergraduate section. Are there any questions before I hand it over to Deb to talk about the MS and UX? Cool. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Makes me want to not have a degree so I can go back. <laughs> Great. We did our job. <laughs> yeah. All right, Deb, uh, without further ado, I'll con I'm controlling the slide. So just tell me when you want me to go to the next one. Oh, you're on mute. I always do that. <laughs> oh, I need that sign that's in your office that says you're on mute. It's I right do. behind her when she does <laughs> meeting. <laughs> I do have a I do have a sign. Yep. Okay, so the Master of Science in User Experience, as I mentioned, this is a relatively new um, degree. Uh, we, I think we launched, okay, the on ground or on campus version is four years old. Uh, the, or in its fourth year, the online is in its second year. So we are just now starting to get the graduates from that. So, um, next Can I slide. tell a funny story about that? that yes. The start of that? Yes. So, um, I was having a beer over at um, uh, Four Peaks on 8th Street with Russ mm -hmm. and we're just catching up and I took on a, a new hire position at Nudesic and I was trying to build the UX team there and um, we had like maybe four or five and I'm like trying to gain some ground with the university and trying to understand where where people come from, right? Like what, what are the degrees and things like that? And, um, you know, he mentioned at the time it was H, uh, it was uh, HCI and, and human factors yeah. and GIT. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, I was kind of like, oh, those totally all of those, I want all the, you know, and then mm -hmm. I was kind of like, well, where I was trying to feel out where I could fit in if you're, if we we're going to have a UX discussion or, or maybe a class on it. So I was kind of like, I was thinking way small. Like I was like, where's the UX 101 class, right? Or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, we don't really have that. And I don't know where I would put it. And then, and then, he, then he was like, well, what if there was like a UX master's thing, right? So now all of them mm -hmm. funnel into that. So I always like to say that was the beginning of the idea. Yep. Now, I, I would totally take credit for that. Yeah, I don't, I'm, it's not me. I didn't do anything beyond that though. That's, I only That's suggested okay. a UX 101 because I wanted to teach it. Oh, <laughs> but, okay. But, um, uh, but he was like, thought way bigger. And, um, yep. and he ended up, you know, like you said, it was, a, this was maybe, it took like a couple of years for it yeah. to kind of get going. And, yep, um, and then all of a sudden it was there and he was like, there it is. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. And then I think I hired one, Annika might maybe one of the first Annika. classes out of that. Mm -hmm. So yep. it was awesome. She was one of our superstars. We have so many superstars in this degree program. It's really exciting. 
Okay, next slide. There we go. Okay, so who are we? Next slide. Okay, we also have a, a mission-ish description. Um, we encompass all aspects of user experience. So that's design, research, and content. Um, it makes us a complete approach to human and human interaction with products and services. So we approach it in a very different way than the majority of UX degrees in the country. Okay, next slide. So that means that we um, we cover design. Which there are plenty of UX design degrees. Um, we cover research. There are plenty of user uh, UX research degrees, um, and we cover the content and like content strategy, UX writing. And there's plenty of master's degrees for that, but we have them all in one. Next slide. So we leverage the expertise from three programs. Um, two of them are the Human Systems Engineering, the HSC, um, and the Graphic Information Technology, or GIT. And we are in the Fulton Schools of Engineering. And we also partner with the Technical Communications Program, which is in the College of Integrative Sciences and Arts. So not only is this interdisciplinary within our college, it's interdisciplinary with another college as well. And this is very, very unique. We are one of the few programs at ASU that does this. Um, and I just did some research on uh, comparable programs to ours, and almost none of them approach it from the research design and content point of view. Amazing. So we're kind of a big deal. Is, are they writing technical stories, like agile stories and, and things like no, that? No. Um, um, they they do um, study agile. Um, they do a lot with um, content strategy. Okay. Um, writing for UX, as in, you know, there are so many things that need to be written. Mm -hmm. um, error messages, um, technical manuals. All of this needs um, to be written from a, a user point of view, and that's what technical communications does. That's great. Okay, next one. So as I mentioned, so we have HSC. This is our kind of our research branch. And they do a lot of um, human factors, uh, statistics, um, research, testing, analyzing data, qualitative and quantitative. Um, GIT, we focus on the, um, the visual design, the accessibility, I'm really big on accessibility, um, and more of the interface. And then technical communications, again, um, works with the technical writing. They do a lot with data visualization as well and um, content strategy. So by combining all of these together, you can, get a, a career as a UX designer or a UX researcher or as a UX writer or con content strategist or manager or director and so and so. You also could be a, a generalist or as we like to call it, a UX unicorn. You have that advantage because you are getting that unicorn education. Um, I'm going to talk in a few slides about what the core courses are, but you get a taste of everything. It's very similar to the um, GIT degree in that you get a little bit of everything and you never know which one is going to stand out to you. you. You can go in and go, I want to do design, darn it. I want to do design. I've had a number of students say this. They take um, a UX course and then they go, oh my God, I had no idea this was a this was an option. I had no idea that this existed. This is what I want to do. So we're really excited when we do that. And um, also as a side note, each of the individual 
groups, so HSE, GIT, and TWC, we all have bachelor's degrees with a concentration in UX. So if you really love design and you want that undergraduate degree, you can do the GIT um, with UX. If you love UX research and you know that's where you wanna focus, you can do an HSC undergraduate degree with a UX concentration. So next one. And to toot our own horn, in a very short amount of time, um, we were just named the number one UX UI master's program by Career Karma this year. Um, next one. We are um, part of the top six best online UX master's degree. And that's just in a year in a semester. So I'm pretty proud about that. Next one. Um, and we are one of the top 25 by that same uh, top UX schools uh, for 2021. So we're definitely a big deal. Next one. All right, what courses do we have? This is where I, I, you know, I had mentioned that we give you a little taste so you can be a little bit of a unicorn. So we take two courses from TWC, two courses from HSE, and two courses from GIT. So you're getting that um, UX from a content and writing standpoint, UX from a um, research standpoint and UX from a design standpoint. Now you can continue just taking a little bit of everything and become a generalist, or you can go through those six classes and go, oh my God, I absolutely love um, research. You can then take more HOC courses. It's up to you. These um, six, yes, yeah, six classes, this is our core. And from there, you can choose uh, which path you want to take. Okay. Um, oh, and I also wanted to mention, um, there are many, many electives in GIT, in HSE, in TWC, and in other areas across ASU. Maybe you want to do UX work in the medical field. That's, that's a pretty big area um, for UX. So um, human systems engineering um, has um, some uh, course. I think they have a course on medical, some kind of medical something. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but there are other courses around the university where you talk about the user experience of medical records, um, medical equipment, even the user experience of um, labeling pharmaceuticals for both people who work in the healthcare industry and for consumers. So, uh, and within GIT and UX, we have partnerships with groups um, with an ASU for paid internships. Um, Right now, a number of students in my capstone class for the UX degree, um, they're interning with um, Ed Plus, which is our ASU online branch of ASU. And um, Amanda Gully, I don't know if she's been to any of these, but she um, employs about 20 students a year. And most of them come from GIT and um, UX. So. Um, we also have faculty who offer part-time jobs or internships uh, working on the research projects. So there are plenty of opportunities for real, real work within the university. And of course, there are internships with various um, companies across the state and across, I guess, across the world. Okay, next. So just as Cassidy mentioned, we are um, on ground and online. So you can do, uh, as I mentioned, 
the online just launched in fall 2021. So all classes are available. You take the same classes. The only thing that changes is the modality that you um, are working in. Would any ID type classes work in there or is it, has, it has to be in, in those three groups? Definitely. Um, GIT launched just this year a focus area in interaction design. Okay. So we do have, um, we do have that. I, I meant, um, actually I meant the uh, industrial design group. Oh, industrial design. Um, yeah, we don't really do industrial okay. design. That is um, Herberger. They yeah, have I didn't a department. know if there's any crossover there. If there's people that are like, hey, I, I do this, but then I want to go do that. You know, I want to do that. Right. I, I know. And that's something that we're looking into is um, partnerships with other um, degree programs across the university. There's definitely something there. There's something with um, the um, Edson School of Nursing, mm -hmm. again, because there is that medical. I've also seen a trend of nurses um, after the pandemic, nurses are going, I do not want to be a nurse anymore, but they have the built-in empathy. Mm -hmm. So shifting to UX work within the um, healthcare industry is, is a great, great opportunity. I see that with teachers too. Yeah. You know, teachers do well in that type mm -hmm. of environment. Yep. Oh, okay. Emily, do you have a question? Okay. Oh, she sorry. My oh. baby's crying, <laughs> but that's okay. I was just trying to say I was a nurse in the pandemic and I'm switching. <laughs> Good for you. That's exciting. Yes. I, I totally understand that. My mom has worked in the healthcare industry for 45 years. And the last couple of years has just been brutal, but you still have that need to help people. And UX is a great way to do that too. All right, next one. So the big question is, is a degree right for you? Well, the only person who can make that decision is you. Um, but during this presentation, we hope you saw the benefits of an undergraduate um, or a graduate degree or both. And um, do you have any questions? So if it's 30, and that was 30 hours, right, for that degree? And that's, yes, it's, that's yes, doable it's, in like two, two years? Is that the usual? Absolutely, or one year if one you, year. Yeah, yeah, if you do the um, Four plus one. combined bachelor's and master's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Deb touched on this really briefly we just introduced a, a focus area in interaction design, which means we, we found within our web design development focus area that students either gravitated towards development or they gravitated towards uh, like the interaction design side. Mm -hmm. And so now we've split it up into two. So students focusing on interaction design can actually tailor their courses to just be that interaction design portion and not have to take the coding. Ooh, coding. <laughs> <laughs> Some people I like don't agree. both. I was the, I was I that person that liked both. Uh, I yeah. liked both of design and the development side. So it's nice to have that split up. Um, students were asking for that. So yeah. yeah. Back in the 90s, you had to, or you didn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and, and, you know, times have changed, and we are determined to change with it. We don't want to be that degree that is still running 20 years ago. We can't, mm -hmm. no. we, we, we won't survive, we can't. And the technology changes so quickly as far as like yeah. what language you would teach, you know, now mm -hmm. it's like Flutter, you know, for mobile design mm -hmm. type, type technologies and, yep. and other ones, you know, plenty of other ones. And it's yeah. not your typicals that long enterprise type languages like C sharp and things like that, although right. that's still in play. So it's like, yeah, yeah that would be really hard for a school to keep up with that kind of training. 
I think yep. doing agnostic like things that don't it doesn't matter where you put it and how you build it right. uh, but right. it's how you know why you do it and you know how it would yep. work and interact yeah yeah the skill set behind that not necessarily the tool itself that you're yeah. using that's right. just that's that thing that's going to be changing every year mm -hmm. two years yep why are you uh, yeah oh r.i.p Uh, but one of the things, too, that I hope there was an emphasis on is as a program, even as a faculty, you know, we meet often within each other, but also with industry. So we're mm -hmm. we're taking the feedback that our students are giving us and we're actively improving our courses, what we're offering, um, workshops that we're providing and even just customizing their focus areas and tracks uh, and, and the way that they can tailor their degree programs. So it's, it's really customized based off of what it is that you want to learn. Yeah. I can honestly say I've been teaching the graduate level um, usability and user experience course for nine years, and it has never been the same class every semester. It is constantly changing. Bad for me. Good for students. Right. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. If there are no well, other questions, got to do our coach levels. Yay. Is there any way you can make their football team better? I just want to put it up. Yeah. There. Sorry Ooh. about that. <laughs> no, no, we're good, but we're not oh, that yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never have lost the two Eastern Michigan. Um, anyway, that's. A I was gonna one. say, don't look at me. I know nothing about football, but. <laughs> well, we kind of sort of don't have a coach now, anyway. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Well, he's getting out before that scandal hits him in the face. Um, so we're not going to be good for a while. <laughs> Actually, yeah, gonna suck. Um, oh, thank you uh, for this. Um, I think it's always good to bring these options to the table. Obviously, there's a lot of options out there in the world. And, mm -hmm. and but I think um, this one, for me, you know, from my point of view, I can see the difference with this kind of a program versus maybe some of the online stuff, you know, the other alternative online stuff that degrees or, or certificates or whatever. But, you know, those are good too. But you have more. You have more options, I think, and a little mm -hmm. bit more higher level of uh, industry involvement um, and, and higher level uh, connected to, to uh, you know, to other people. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I hope uh, we can get this message out. I'll put this out on my channel and see if we can get those numbers up to what, 6,000%. Oh. oh yeah please don't do that to me <laughs> <laughs> i don't have i guarantee you i don't have the influence to do that for sure but um, it looks like we have a question that's okay. actually yeah uh, surya yeah i have a question because i'm an actual grad student at ac right now i'm pursuing mm -hmm. my industrial design at mm -hmm. hubogus so I just want to know I'm in my second year and I did we lose you? Cut out on us. You cut out right at the good part. I know. Can you hear us? I you know something that I that would help me pursue a job. No. Nope. Sorry, you cut out for a little while there. Can you repeat? Ouch. <laughs> so <laughs> I, yeah, uh, I was I was just wondering, you know, if there is any uh, dual degree or any certification that I could get while I'm, you know, going through my bachelor's right now. I mean, master's right now. Um, we don't have um, certification yet, but um, on the back burner for the UX mm -hmm. degree, um, I, I'd like to see in the next couple of years creating a post baccalaureate certificate. So what that is, is you have a um, bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fork out the money or you don't want to devote the time to a full master's degree. You can do 21 hours, which is seven classes. 
and you can get a, a post-baccalaureate certificate in US. Mm. For That's hours. a few years down the line. Oh. <laughs> but um, as far as um, you are welcome to join, um, uh, I have a class, um, it's a GIT 542. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, usability and user experience. Um, mm -hmm. You can request an override and you are welcome to join, uh, to uh, sign up for the class. Awesome. That will be nice. Because I, mm -hmm. I took one class, which is advanced UX design. Uh, it was mm -hmm. taken by Jacob Ferguson. So, okay. yeah, I mean, that, he gave me a brief, you know, exposure to UX in my last mm -hmm. semester. And. That, that was pretty much the only course I could find. Uh, uh, I didn't know okay. these many courses exist. With an A. This was yep. my very first time exploring all of them. Yep. We're here. Woo yep. But yeah, you can definitely, I, I let students from, I mean, industrial design comes and takes that class. Um, I've had applied linguistics students mm. take the class because they're working with online tutoring systems and that requires some UX mm -hmm. involvement. So. Gotcha. Yeah, James, you did a lot of that, right? You did some overrides, right? Yeah, I took, um, I took Russ's mm -hmm. uh, HSE class mm -hmm. um, in, in place of a human factors class that was offered at the design school in the Herberger mm -hmm. College. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's how I ended up meeting uh, Matt and working at Nudesic. So I uh, couldn't recommend it more highly. <laughs> and then he yep. quit on me. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's sure. the next step in my beautiful just, career that, that you, uh, <laughs> that you, you kicked off. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, is there, do you ever share links or anything after events? Uh, absolutely. I'll probably okay. do it. Uh, yeah. If you can give me the links and I can. Mm -hmm. sure. blast them out to all the well the channels that you'd want me to are they just public links They're nothing yeah. Sensitive. yeah okay yeah i could i can put them a lot of places so especially when i post the um the video i can mm -hmm. attach it to that too. yeah perfect cool uh, yeah so it's, it's uh exciting times and ux in itself you know the idea of design is really growing you know, throughout those years of like not really knowing what it's called, and uh, mm -hmm. but we just intuitively do it. Now we have a formalized set of tools and set of methods that we do this with. You know, borrowed from ergonomics and all the other things that were out in the world. And um, but I just think it's an interesting phenomenon where you know a few years ago the you know a lot of years ago the developers and they are still coveted, but they were more coveted, I think, than today, because I think there's a lot of accelerators for, for de uh, developers that help them out a lot more. They don't really need to have extensive expertise to the T, but, you know, the ones that are good are good. But all that focus now, from my point of view, of front-loading, or, or not really front-loading, but using that energy and coming up with good heuristic design, um, rather than good QA people, <laughs> you know, I put the energy into the front part of getting it right up to 80 to 90% better, right? Then like get good developers, right? So, cause if I can, if I can create a plan around how we will build this software and give you all the things that you need to build the software and you don't have to make very many decisions in how you would build it um, and what it looks like. It just accelerates that group. And now you don't need as many developers. You need a modest amount of developers now and you can use that energy to be more empathetical and testing and do cheaper things up front. Um, and you give a lot more designers opportunity to work in that regard. So you're not, you're not like back in the day, it would be one designer for eight devel developers supporting them. Now I feel like it's a little bit more balanced where you can have three designers, a product manager, product designer with UI and skills, and then a 
the person has the research skills working together along with all the technology you know leads and stuff really working together in that that design thinking co-execution co-creation way um and you're not seeing this like waiting around for a story you know waiting around for my ui so i can code it you know we're all working in a in a room together sticky noting drawing sketching together and creating a much better product for a customer using a lot more um you know uh, holistic techniques like design uh sprinting and, and things like that so i just feel like we're becoming more important <laughs> And it should have been yeah. in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Laid all that burden onto a developer and they had to do it. And they yep. didn't get the formalized training that we were getting to do to be empathetical, which is odd, but it's it happens, but um, and it still kind of happens. Yep. But um I just feel like this is the time when this is why we're getting better, why why we're getting bigger. Yep. And and we UX is really breaking down silos too. And that's kind of how we looked at the master's degree. Well, let's just break down that silo. What, who says that a designer can't have research experience? Absolutely. Who says um, a researcher can't have um, content strategy experience? It, there's no reason to section us off in our own little cubicles anymore. Anybody on the team could kill a, a user experience. Mm -hmm. The designer's not in charge of it. The de developer's not in charge of it or responsible completely. And everybody's responsible for that up to the word that you're going to view. Like that word screws up tech, it screws up the user experience. It, it just led me down a path that I didn't realize and could because it said this versus that, you know, and oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, databases can be slow. That's user experience. Uh, having any user experience is user is maybe bad user experience. You know, like not a transparent user experience where it just doesn't do anything to me, which is nice. I just keep walking, and it just does it around me, and I don't even have to lift a finger. You know, maybe that's a great user experience, but some some work had to go into doing that. Can't just happen on its own. So I think it's kind of neat. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Four UX more. will take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think it's important that you mentioned, Matt, the, the importance of how even the smallest bit can affect the user experience. Because mm -hmm. in my experience, when I worked at GoDaddy, we worked on plans and pricing and checkout flows. And even the word on a button could change the experience as a whole, not only through the numbers and data, but just how people trusted the plans and pricing overall, mm -hmm. um, the way we displayed the, the actual cost between the plans page and the cart. Like there's so much that goes into it and you can spend cycles on, you know, testing just one word. Um, so just having that knowledge and, and that focus on that user first is so important. But I think, again, like ASU, our program does a good job about thinking about it holistically. So you have all that experience behind you and you know, again, the research side, the strategy side, the writing side. Um, and even if you don't want to do all of it, you still have had practice with it. And you know how to talk the language. So if you just want to be a designer and you're over in your little designer group, you still know how to talk to the researchers. You still know how to talk to um, the writers, you know, you can speak their language, so to speak. So you'll know automatically, oh, hey, um, we want to design all of this. Wait a minute. That's not going to be possible in the time limit we have. So let's see how we can, you know, pare that down. Yeah. The prioritization effort of most valuable product that we can do. I've been actually trying to eliminate using the words user experience as some kind of grouping you know sales tool you know sales people like to do how much, how much ux is on this project or how many ux people are on this project or what's the ux look like so we can estimate out this project right and it's technically we're building a product that will 
invoke some sort of user experience after we do this or while we're doing it, you know, if we're continuously delivering some kind of product to the masses, you know, like, what is that first experience? What is that second experience? What is, if we have the first experience and it's bad and we take uh, six months to do the next experience, then might, you might lose some people, you know, if you, but if you get the first experience and then all of, and they see that you updated it the next day or the next more, uh, week and they're seeing motion and movement, maybe my, I can be a little bit forgiving on the user experience when I can see that they're working through it. Uh, I think a lot of people nowadays are savvy to that. Um, especially in mobile design where it's constantly updating almost every other day and which is annoying in itself. That's an experience too. But if you just say, Oh, auto update, then maybe it doesn't work. But um, I just feel like, you know, it's, it just, it's this evolution of how we all, we are all desiring the best user experience and we're the ones that are going to be mindful of it. And hopefully in the future, it doesn't help you guys, but like, well, maybe um, if everybody is a design thinker and everybody in the, you know, is mindful of the, those, that kind of way, that, the, that ideology almost, um, do we need UX people anymore? Because we're all user experience people at that, at heart, we just need methods to get through it. We need the tools we need. So you don't sell the UX part of things to me. It's only a, that you sell the person that's mindful of it. And, and we have, we're selling methods that helps us get through it. And that's how I like to approach it when I'm selling it at New Desic. So, and, and I think it resonates a little bit more. Uh, we're stopped talking about when are you off this project kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, if you want off the, if I want me off the project, then who's going to be mindful of this user experience anymore, right? Like that just doesn't stop at my wireframe and it keeps going, you know, there's testing and there's measurement and everything else that comes behind it. So yeah, uh, never stops. No nope. ongoing. You pay me forever. That's what I said. <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> yeah, deal with it. I, I think that just speaks to, you know, the method itself, like baked into the whole process. But mm -hmm. if people are selling that part of it as like, oh, the best user experience, like that's just showing how big this is becoming, right? And we've only seen that trend happen for, uh, you know, the last few years. So that's great for us. At a global us. scale, I think, a global yeah. scale. I think your big companies are always doing it. IBM's been, I've been learning about design thinking from them for six or seven years but they just don't it hasn't come out right mm -hmm. and Carnegie Mellon had HCI for like the beginning um but yet nobody really knew anything else when I lived on the east coast there were like three places that I could go to school that even came close to that and it wasn't that it was it was just the infancy of GIT really in all honesty it was mm -hmm. Photoshop Illustrator at the time, Maya wasn't even out, so it was like 3D Studio Max or some some other type of tool for 3D animation, and then audio and, and video and, and things, and they're so new, or they're so expensive that you can't even afford it as a student, and right. um, but yeah, but now everything's, you can do that stuff on your phone almost. You can make a whole movie on your phone. <laughs> no, that's crazy. <laughs> and do the editing. Yeah. <laughs> all in our hands now um but hey i think thanks a lot um probably start shutting it down but uh really appreciate yeah. you showing us all this and i'm i'm actually really excited about working with you two uh in the future and and helping all of your students and anybody else that wants to um get into mm -hmm. your program i i'm a huge advocate and i you know i definitely suggest it the first time versus any other thing, because it is the easiest route. It has it all there. I get it. There's a money thing too, though, but you know, but if you can get yeah. through that, you know, maybe you can get a job with me and I can, you can pay back faster. Huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you all for attending. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. No problem. <laughs>